Hello fellow anatomists, I'm Dana Basinski and we're about to dive into the thoracic cavity. The primary function of the thoracic wall is to protect the thoracic and abdominal organs, provide an attachment for the upper extremities, and to aid in respiration. It's comprised of 12 thoracic vertebra, 12 ribs, cartilage, and the sternum. And note here the superior thoracic aperture, which provides an opening for the trachea, the esophagus, nerves, and vessels, as well as the inferior thoracic aperture, which is the attachment point for the diaphragm separating the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity. The diaphragm has several openings that provide for inferior access for the vena cava, the esophagus, and the aorta. The diaphragm is the primary muscle involved in respiration. Now let's discuss the, the sternum. We have the manubrium, the sternal body, and the xiphoid process. An important anatomical landmark to note here is where the manubrium and the body join together at the level of T4, T5, this is where rib number two joins in, and this is where the trachea bifurcates and the aortic arch begins. There are several ways to classify ribs. A typical rib has a head, neck, tubercle, a long curved body, and then on the inferior edge, there's a costal groove that houses the intercostal artery, vein, and nerve. Your intercostal spaces house your intercostal muscles and their corresponding vessels. Moving from anterior to posterior, First, we'll see our external intercostal muscle, whose fibers run in this fashion and aid in inspiration by expanding and elevating your ribs. Next, we'll see our internal intercostal muscle, and then finally, our innermost intercostal muscle, whose fibers run like so and aid in expiration by depressing the ribs. Additional muscles that aid in inspiration include the sternocleidomastoid, the anterior scalene, our serratus, posterior, superior, and the pec minor. And additional muscles that aid in expiration include the transversus thoracus, our rectus abdominis, internal oblique, and then deeply our transverse abdominis. Posteriorly, we see the serratus posterior inferior, and then our quadratus lamborum. Our phrenic nerve originates at C3, C4, C5, and extends down bilaterally to innervate the diaphragm and it extends along the pericardium and the parietal pleura. Alongside this same pathway, that's where we'll find our pericardiophrenic artery and vein, which is a branch of the internal thoracic artery. 